It's that time of year again. Time for predictions. All sorts of speculations without any proof or evidence whatsoever. We love to do it. It's the best fun. It is Carnival Day in Venice. That means two things. One is people walking around in crazy costumes and watch predictions. So let's take a look at what we think might be happening and watch as the wonders being discontinued and released in a few weeks. Now, before I start, Let's get a couple of things clear. No one knows. If some channel says they actually know what's gonna be released or discontinued, for sure, they're lying to you, because no one knows, for sure. Look at last year, I mean, they released the celebration dial and the, the jigsaw thing, the autism, and nobody was expecting those, so. Uh, don't take any of this as verbatim. This is just predicting, this is just pontification, conjecture, call it whatever you want. Honestly, this is like my nightmare. I would have stayed home today and avoided all this shit, but I figured you guys would probably want to see it. So let's start with the watch that everybody's been talking about now for the better part of a year, the Pepsi. So many rumors going around about the Pepsi. These guys, have, they, have, they have boats on their heads. <laughs> Everybody has been saying this is going to be discontinued and they seem awful certain. That's a bit strange to me. I don't, it's not like it's the end of a cycle. You know, the steel Pepsi that we all know now, the one on the Jubilee and then re released on the Oyster, hasn't been around that long. It's not like it's a 10 or 20 year. Uh, anniversary or something like that so it seems a little odd to me that they might discontinue it now of course a lot of people are saying it's the bezel right it's like the bezel is difficult to make it's brittle for every one they successfully make they make two that break and they have to throw them out all of this kind of stuff I guess if that's true maybe they would be considering moving on and making something new but i don't know uh, i find it a little hard to believe that they can't build these things properly i mean there are counterfeit pepsis out there made in china and uh they managed to do it i mean it i'm not sure it has exactly the same luster as the the real bezel but it seems a little odd to me but Hey, maybe there's something in it. What's happening the past few weeks is very interesting because as the rumors build and the tension builds, the price has gone up. If you look at the analytics and the, the various markets and so on, the graphs online, you see that the Pepsi actually dipped down to about 19 grand. Uh, several weeks ago and now it's back up at like 215 it's like the only watch on the market that's actually going in an upward direction apart from every speedmaster and under the sun that is they just keep going up for some reason um so i don't know now if they do discontinue it will they replace it with something else like a coke 
Everybody wants the Coke back. The red and black bezel. But I'm thinking, like, if it's hard for them to make the Pepsi bezel, surely it'd be just as hard to make the, the Coke bezel, huh? No? I don't know. They already gave us the Guinness last year. And then there was the Sprite. They've already given us a lot of stuff in the GMT line. And there's the full gold on the bimetal Guinness. Bellissimi. Like, they've given us a lot of cool shit in the GMT line. We didn't want the left-hand drive, the Sprite. But now everybody wants it because that's how it works, right? Rolex give us something we don't think we want and then we all decide we want it, right? If you do own a Pepsi and uh, you're thinking of selling it, clearly if it gets discontinued, the value of that watch is going to go up, even in the slow market that we have now. It's still, you're still going to see an increase. It's already a popular model. It's already a waitlist watch uh, and the slow market hasn't affected that much at all. It's already trading at double retail, has been for years, it was triple retail during the spike of two years ago. Uh, but it's still a really expensive uh, watch to get on the gray. If it gets discontinued, it's gonna be even worse, of course. But a really good time, I think, to sell that watch is actually now, because as the rumors build, people are getting kind of excited. Uh, si, un po'. Si, perfetto. Poi prendo del... Uh, tacchino. Si, questo è il rosso. So now a lot of people are saying, and there are photos going around of, the new LN, Lunette Noir, replacing the Espresso, the Black Beauty that was discontinued in 2019. Uh, the photos look good, it looks, looks nice, but it's probably a mock-up, you know? There's no guarantee. I'll tell you one thing that will happen though, it'll, it'll mean that the original espresso becomes even more sought after because from what I can see from the mock-ups, it's not fully black, it's a black and grey bezel. So the fully black one will remain kind of elusive and mysterious in the, uh, in the watch world. I personally think it would make a lot of sense to release a Sea Dweller in titanium. I mean, it's a lighter material. They are leaning into the titanium thing now with that Yacht Master. And, you know, Sea Dweller is a big watch. So releasing a titanium one makes sense to me. I can't see why they wouldn't do that, especially seeing as the ST43 wasn't a really big hit with people for some reason. Um, I think a lot of people would be interested in a, in a titanium, either a deep sea or an SD43 in titanium. That would be really, really fucking cool. This rumor has been going around now for a while, the Master 2. It's probably the least liked of the entire catalog, unfortunately. 
but I've seen photos of Yamaster 2s on rubber and they are actually really cool. So if they want to stick the Yamaster 2 on an Oyster Flex, I think there could be a market for it. I mean, bigger watches sit more comfy on rubber. And those mock-ups I saw of, of that watch on rubber look really fucking good. So I think that could revitalize the, uh, that model in the catalog. It could give it a new lease of life. So I'd look forward to that. The Yamaster 40, uh, I think is ready for an overhaul. I mean, they've released 42 mil versions already on rubber. I would love to see it. The regular Yamaster 40, the Rhodium, and the blue dial one on the bracelet in 42. If they did that, that would quickly become my favorite in the whole cat. I would do anything to get my hands on one of those. I would go wild for that. Because I love that watch, as you guys know, but it, it doesn't wear huge. It's not a huge watch. Uh, Mamma che Marcello, non giro di più. Gesù. Mangio qualche tramezzino. Eh. Sì, dimmi pure che tramezzino. Uh, tonno, uova. Sì. E dopo... Posso così, due tonno uova. Sì. anche un bicchiere d'acqua naturale grazie Out of all watches from the whole catalog, I don't know why the sub isn't already on the Oyster Flex. I mean, it makes perfect sense to put it on there. It's a dive watch. It's for getting in the water and in the sand. I don't know. It's high time. I mean, they put the Daytona on the Oyster Flex. They put the Sky Dweller in the Oyster Flex. Like, what the hell? The Yacht Master makes sense. But, like... Come on. Now, the problem is, of course, being Rolex, they pro probably won't make it in steel, right? they fuck with our heads a bit and stick it in like solid gold or you know white gold or something on the oyster flex it'll be like oh. it'll just make it that little bit out of reach that's what they tend to do with these models so uh, <laughs> it might be a little bit bittersweet if they stick it on the oyster flex who knows Starbucks was not really a massive hit. Uh, they're already a much more available watch to get. I don't think it really resonated with people. Certainly not as much as the original Kermit did. I think a lot of people missed the Hulk. And I'd love to see it come back. But if you were to ask me to bet money on it, I wouldn't do it.
one watch that could be a big hit though is a solid gold hulk i mean it's been a few years and people have been thinking that's coming can you imagine a yellow gold sub with green dial and green bezel wow it would be an instant hit an instant classic and now that solid gold subs are going for a little under retail on the gray i think this one would go for over retail on the gray Posso sedermi? Dammi un spritz? Grazie. Metto di là. Al sale. Grazie. A new mill goes, huh? I mean, it was always a strange model, beautiful, I love the Milgauss, but kind of out, out of date because of that Faraday cage, right? We've, we've figured out different, better ways of making a watch anti-magnetic or a-magnetic. But there's a lot of charm to that model. Now, of course, they discontinued the Air King, the previous Air King, and re-announced it straight away in a new form there uh, what was that was that last year or was the year before um, the rumors are that they're gonna re-release the Milgaus now in this new form you know with a new case just like the Air King probably with crown guards probably with that kind of Explorer 2 shaped case and of course why would they have a Faraday cage in there? They can use a silicon hairspray and it'll be amagnetic. How then do they call it Mill Gauss? Because it's Mille Gauss, right? Thousand Gauss. They could go for a million Gauss. <laughs> they could try to outdo everyone else and call it a million Gauss and keep the Mill, Mill Gauss name. I don't know. I do hope, though, that if they do that, they keep the same color scheme. Because the mock-ups going around the internet, they have a black dial and it's, there's no green crystal and stuff. I'd love to see the green crystal stay and I'd love to, to see a Z Blue. I'm a big fan of the Z Blue, it's a beautiful watch. Um, if they're going to change the form factor of it, so be it. But I'd love to see a Z Blue uh, carry over and certainly that green crystal. If they don't do that and it becomes... Uh, the green crystal becomes an obsolete thing then all those older Milgauss models are going to go up in value on the market because they'll just become this kind of strange weird anomaly in the Rolex catalog I think it could be cool Explorer 1 with a white dial. People have been talking about that one now for a few years too. Uh, we haven't seen any side of it. We got the two-tone one, which was not a hit. <laughs> you can get that watch now fairly easily. Um, I think people, if they're into an Explorer, they want steel. That's what they want. They just want a tool, nice tool watch. Nothing too blingy. But a white dial one would really be cool. Uh, I'd love to see it. I'd be interested in one in 40 mils if they did release it. I don't see why they don't do it, but then again, I don't understand why Rolex do half the things they do anyway. So, uh, but I do think it would be a big hit. I think that that watch would be very, very sought after if they released it because uh, white dials, have a certain appeal. Yeah, 
there's been a lot of talk about the Daytona because the meteorite dials disappeared. So people are thinking that maybe the meteorite dials are coming back. I wouldn't be surprised if they waited another few years for that because they just made a big, big change to the Daytona. They overhauled the Daytona. I think they're going to hold back and when they re-release the meteorite dials, it'll be big news. Just letting it go for one year doesn't seem like them. You know what I mean? So that's it guys, this is just the way Rolex are. We never know what the hell they're gonna do. They're very unpredictable. But I will say that usually something we're predicting turns out to be true and something turns out to be a real shock. That's always the case, every year. <laughs> Some honorable mentions though would be, uh, it would be nice to see Patek make the 5811 in steel and start making some steel more steel pieces they just discontinued the 5980 maybe a new version of that would be cool and Tudor put out a solid gold heritage model it was basically like a Prince the Tudor Prince chronograph last year in solid gold that would be cool if they discontinued the current chrono the, the lady in white and all that, right? And made, you know, re-released a newer version of that Tudor Prince chrono. That would be cool. And I feel like Tudor always come in with the most interesting stuff at Watches and Wonders anyway. Last year, at least, it was, it was all the buzz was around Tudor and not really around Rolex as much. So, uh... I feel like Tudor aren't going to disappoint. And if they re-release the Prince chronograph, you know, with the subdials at 6, 9 and 12 instead of 3, 6, 9, that would be really, really cool. I mean, who knows if they'll put a Valjoux 7750 in there like the old ones, but I won't mind if they don't and they just put an in-house movement. But Tudor always make the biggest balls. Like last year, it was the same. All eyes were on Tudor last year and uh, I feel like that could easily happen again this year so anyway let's see what happens guys it's it's fun there's no way to really know what they're gonna do there's no predicting it really anybody who says they're sure they're not telling you the truth <laughs> they're trying to get you to click on their video it's a bit like saying oh the watch market is dead I, that'll get you to click on it too right you all fall for that one. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching again, guys. I'll be curious to see what happens. And uh, if I hear any other rumors, I'll let you guys know, okay? Thanks for watching the channel. See you guys again soon. Peace.